Welcome to Stone Cold Shows. I'm Brandon Strange alongside Josh Jordan. You can follow him on X at Josh Jordan 975. No Charlie today, but he will be back with us next week. Uh, while you're here and I got your attention, please hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. We're starting a whole new season of Stone Cold Strows, and we want you to be along with the ride for us. We think this is really going to be a special season for the hometown team. Charlie, we got to, that's, that's by habit, Josh. Josh. We got a we got a week or got a glimpse of Jordan Alvarez hitting some BP bombs courtesy of uh, KPRC's out Ari Alexander from spring training. Joe Spada was telling the media that Jordan is healthy and doing more earlier this spring. Uh, that's really good. Uh, you know, we know with Jordan when he's healthy, he's as good as it gets. But for three consecutive seasons, we have seen him play less and less games. So from 21, 144 games, and 22, 135 games, and then last year, 114 games. And it got me thinking, um, with Shohei out of the AL now, it kind of opens up that MVP race. So I kind of wondered, maybe with that open now, like if, if Jordan can put enough games together and put the numbers together, um, what that kind of does for his odds for uh, the MVP race. I looked at Corey Seager's numbers. He finished second behind Shohei. He only played four more games than Jordan did last season, but his BP and OPS were higher. So obviously, um, you know, it'll help the case if the Astros can land somewhere in that win projection that Pakoda is uh, projecting them at that we talked about earlier in the week. Um, it also is going to be about whether guys can kind of protect him as well. And so he doesn't get that Barry Bonds treatment. Um, what do you think about, you know, what we're seeing from Jordan early, uh, you know, the, the amount of games you'd like to see him play this season, obviously more than less and, and you know, kind of that protection around him. I think it's the top of Jordan's priority list. You know, he had a, a column with, you know, Chandler Rome or Chandler Rome had a column about Alvarez, I should say, and said, you know, he tweaked his diet this off season, eliminated some foods that he thought, you know, could be a detriment to him. He's really focused. That's his main focus is being a leader, being available for his team this year. So he's saying all the right things. And we know a change in diet can make a big difference for guys. So hopefully that's something that's working in his favor. I think as far as the MVP stuff, certainly he has to play, you know, a fair amount of games, you know, at least get to maybe around 140, something like that. Just you're going to need that to put up those numbers. So, yeah, when I look back, let's see, he was third in MVP voting in 2022. He played 135 games that year. So that kind of gives you an idea where he needs to be. The other thing I, I will point to that is that Jordan mostly plays DH. Now we're hearing that he's going to play more left field this year. That could certainly help. But we know in MVP voting, sometimes they give you know credit to guys that play more defense. And the other thing, stolen bases. Now, Seager only had a couple last year, so that didn't really work in his favor. But when I looked at Aaron Jones's MVP year from a couple of years ago, he stole 16 bases that year, along with hitting over, you know, or hitting 60 home runs plus. Um, so that's not something Jordan's going to do. He, he doesn't steal bases. He doesn't even attempt to steal bases. So that's not going to help him so much. But being healthy is, is where it's at. We know he's a great, great hitter. If, if he can be healthy for around 140 games, play a little more left field, then it's certainly in the realm of possibility he could lock up the MVP. We saw a video of him also from, I believe it was from Chandler Rome, who uh, taken some uh, fungo drills at second base, which is also a, uh, a first base drill, as Jeremy Branham pointed out on, on X. You know, we, we obviously don't expect that to be on the Astros' radar. This Those drills we saw... Michael Brantley doing those same drills last season and he didn't play any first, but it's, you know, in case of emergency guys don't feel completely uh, foreign at, you know, in, in the infield. But I mean, it, it does make you think like long-term, I mean, obviously they have a brand new here now uh, that that's not in the, in the immediate future, but should, you know, should they work up to that? I, I really do think it's in their best interest to put him in another, another position besides left field they're probably also going to want to work one other player into that DH position, right? Throughout the year. 
yeah, I mean, Jose Altuve being one of them. Espada also talked about, you know, Yiner Diaz. When he's not catching, you can still have his bat in the lineup if he's in at DH. You know, Jose Abreu is a guy that we saw really benefited from rest last year. So I think they would like to to use that DH spot to rest some guys. But you still got Chaz McCormick to account for. They say they're going to play him every day. So it'll be interesting. You bring up, you know, moving Jordan to first, and obviously that would be more of a long-term thing. I, I'm reminded of the movie Moneyball where they're like, oh, just teach him to first play first base. It's not that hard. And he's like, it's incredibly hard. So we'll see if that's something for Jordan in the future. But it makes sense. Jose Abreu is only under contract for two more seasons. He had a down year in the regular season last Last year, hopefully he bounces back, but maybe that could be something in the future where you slide Jordan over to first, and then that that kind of gives you more options in the outfield too. You can start, you know, locking Chaz into playing left field. If Jake Myers doesn't shake out, maybe they grab a center fielder sometime in the future. And I also think about George Springer, like how often he is banged up because the dude is running into walls, diving for everything. There's only one speed for him, and. You know, Jordan's built differently than Springer, where I feel like he might suffer even more, you know, bumps and bruises from laying out for balls than even Springer. So he's a guy you got to have in your lineup with that bat. So, you know, and with him crashing into Jeremy Pena like that, that haunts me in my dreams still from (laughs) from the past. So I would love to see him move over to first base. But obviously, that's something down the road. We don't even know if he can really play that position. But it's certainly it's enticing if you're an Astros fan because it it locks in your best hitter at first base where you typically see your best hitters playing a lot of the time even David Ortiz when he wasn't DHing playing first base so that could ultimately be where where Jordan ends up and you know want to be clear collisions do happen at first sure but with the bags being bigger now a little a little bit safer so I, I think just an overall safer position um, you know, one of the other things Chandler Rome wrote about was Jordan kind of transitioning into this clubhouse leader, being one of the staples and 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 the leaders on the field and finding his voice off the field. Mauricio Dubon had a quote about Jordan. When Jordan talks, everyone listens and that sometimes he seems quiet, but he knows what he's saying. Everybody here respects him and it's not off what he does on the field. It's what type of person he is and his character he brings to the table. So that really speaks. And, you know, obviously uh, they have a we know they have a very special relationship from what we saw last year. But really good words that you want to hear from your role players on the team that are looking up to a guy who's trying to become the leader, not just on the field, but off. Uh, We've got, you know, we've seen so much transition and turnover on this team and, and really big names. We don't need to go through the entire list, but that's going to become acutely important very soon, it would seem, right? Certainly. I mean, there, there's no way around it. Your leaders on this team for the foreseeable future are Jose Altuve and Jordan Alvarez. They're under contract. They're two of your best players. And if you wouldn't have told me that quote right there was attributed to Jordan Alvarez, that sounds like what they say about Altuve. He's a great person. He, he's a leader, but he's not super vocal. So, you know, that, that kind of sounds very similar there. So that, that makes sense. And of course, guys look to Jordan. He's, you know, Altuve calls him the best hitter in baseball. And I don't think he's wrong. He, he's incredible. So you're going to respect those guys and listen when they talk to you. And, you know, Alvarez helped Dubon a little bit with his his approach last year. And Dubon had a bounce back season. So I think Jordan's ready for that role. And I'm also reminded of, you know, if you're a Houston Texans fan, I think Andre Johnson, you know, he doesn't say a lot, but he was definitely a leader in that locker room. He was somebody to be respected. Now he's a Hall of Famer. So, you know, you don't have to be the rah-rah guy to get it done. There's different ways to lead. Yeah. And and again, and if we're watching Alex Bregman's last hurrah with this team, then it's going to become that much more important that another leader does rise up because we have seen some very vocal, you know, George was a vocal leader on this team. Carlos was a vocal leader on this team and, and Bregman's been uh, one of the locker room pillars as well. So you Jordan stepping into that, uh, that role, especially in the loss of uh, Michael Brantley, who from all accounts was a major locker room leader. Uh, you know, we don't talk about Lance McCullers because he is uh, not on the field as much in these last uh, few seasons, but also a very lock- vocal locker room leader as well. But I do think there is something impactful about 
a guy going out there and performing and, and putting his money where his mouth is and, and kind of sh- leading the way with his performance. And I, I think that's something that a lot of guys, uh, you know, can, can look up to. Um, and, and I, th- I think respect, you know, and it's, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to go do it. A hundred percent. And, you know, you brought up protection a little earlier about for Jordan, you know, it's a new manager. What, what is this batting order going to look like? You know, if, if he is to win an MVP, he's going to need protection. Is, is it going to be a Brayu behind him or is it going to be Kyle Tucker? Who knows? But I, I do think it's interesting that, that Joe Espada brought up what, what the first day of tr- spring training, basically, he said, Hater's going to be our closer. He's working the ninth inning. He is letting guys know this is your role. These are going to be your habits. You get your repetition in. You know what to expect when you come to the ballpark every day. And he even said that about Jeremy Pena. We we talked about this a lot on the channel about Pena hitting second and then hitting eighth and then hitting seventh and then back to second. You know, all year, Pena didn't really know where he was going to be hitting. You know, and Espada said, I want Jeremy Pena to know what he's going to be doing every day when he comes to the ballpark. So I think that's a good thing to get these guys in routine and know what to expect and not be moving them around all the time. Of course, there are exceptions, but overall, we're seeing some different approaches than what Dusty Baker did last year. A spot of wants guys to know, hey, you're pitching this inning. You're going to be hitting in this spot in the lineup. And I think there's a little bit of comfort just knowing you're not going to be surprised every day you come to the ballpark. Yeah, I, I think that will be a welcome change for a lot of guys. Obviously, I'm not in the locker room, so I haven't talked to him or asked. But we we know just people in general. I'm not a ball player, but just people in general are more comfortable in their habits. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm reminded of all of the hubbub that happened during the 2017 season, and you know, get to the World Series, and George was scuffling in the leadoff spot, and all this that outcry. I'll get him out of the leadoff spot, out of the leadoff spot, and then the guy becomes your World Series MVP. So you just never know like what faith does for a player and keeping them in that position, and kind of setting the expectation for them and reinforcing their you know them with confidence. Um, so. I think that's going to be, I think it's going to be something to watch again. Like I'm, I'm really excited to see what Jordan does. We haven't, we have yet to really see him put together a real full season of, of slate of games. The most he's played is 144. I'd love to see him at least match that or exceed it this season. And if he does watch out, I think we're in for some special things. So uh, guys, that's going to be it for uh, this episode of Stone Cold Strohs. Make sure, please, you're subscribed to the channel. We know most people who watch this are not subbed. So please do us that solid and subscribe. We want all of you along for the ride in 2024. And hit like on this video if you haven't already. If you like listening to your podcast, every episode of Stone Cold Strohs is available in audio form at your favorite podcast app. Josh, that's going to be it. I appreciate it, bud. Good conversation as always. I'll catch you next week.